Hi, I'm Eric, and this is It's Project A, where I share the projects I'm working on with you. Today we're going to be talking about... Motors. Let's get started. DC electric motors come in all shapes and sizes, and can be found in all sorts of appliances. In commercial applications, the motors typically are purpose-built for the specific application. That usually means that you can't find a data sheet online to help you figure out how to use it. For example, I pulled this motor out of a printer that wasn't being used anymore. Well, the motor's fine. It works great. So how do I use it? Well, I want to go from this, which is a raw motor, to something more like this or this. These both have uh, an electric motor just like this one, but they also have gear reduction to make the output more usable for common applications. But I don't know how to get from there to here. How do I do that without knowing anything about this motor? Well, the bottom line is I can't, or rather I could try and flounder a bit, and probably spend a lot of time trying to figure it out. Or I could just make some measurements. And that's what a dynamometer is for. The dynamometer measures the speed and the torque output of the motor to give you the information you need to build a gear reduction. The basic concept for the design I'm using dates back to the 1800s. I connect a drum to the motor shaft, I'm going to represent that by this disc, and a strap goes around the drum to apply friction force. I measure the friction force directly using a pair of spring scales. And the friction force times the drum radius gives me the torque. To calculate the power output, I can also measure the speed using a digital tachometer. Speed times torque equals power. Let's get building. I'm making the motor mount out of some scrap steel plate.
This adjustable mount allows me to increase the tension on the belt so I can vary the force as, as I test. Now let's make some measurements with my new dynamometer. I've already pre-tensioned the scales to 2 newtons, and then I apply 24 volts. Uh, as you can see, the tension pulls on one spring scale and slackens the other. The difference between the measurements gives us our total force applied to the drum. Then I can adjust the tension to 3 newtons, and try again. and one more time at 4 newtons to round out the chart. If you have one available, use a multimeter while you're doing this test to measure the current going through the motor. That can help you with sizing motor controllers in the future. After we take a few measurements, we can see the power curve of this motor coming together. The diameter of the drum is 30 millimeters. That gives us a moment arm of 15 millimeters. So based on that moment arm, we can calculate the torques. To match the speeds we measured. I'm going to chart what we measured. So if we were to apply a 2 to 1 gearing ratio, then our torques would be doubled and our speeds would be halved. This will give us some sort of idea of what we can expect from a gear reduction. And the same thing goes for a 3 to 1 ratio. The torques would be tripled, and the speeds would be reduced to one third. I mean, and, and that helps us practically, because if we know we have an application where the operating point is out here, then this motor isn't suitable, it's not powerful enough to get there. That also helps us understand how much gear reduction we would need if our application were somewhere in this region. Thanks for watching this build video. I had a great time building this dynamometer, and I got a little smarter along the way. I hope you did too. If you like this Project Day video and you want to see more, be sure to click the subscribe button, and I'll see you next Project Day.